Hi guys, so as you can see I'm at home at Gorge River and a lot of you guys have had questions about my life here at Gorge River and my family. So in this video I thought I would answer some of the questions that you guys have had on this channel and then I've also added in a bunch of other questions that people have been asking me for many years. I'm going to answer most of the questions myself and I'm going to get mum and dad and my sister Robin to answer some of the questions that relate to them as well. So. It's gonna be a good video, hope you like it. Let's get into it now. So Living History School commented, you should make videos on daily life living off the grid. I will do my best with that. This is the first of my Gorge River videos, um, but it's a little bit hard to make daily videos because I'm not actually living here at the moment. So I'll do my best. Nicholas Charez and a lot of other people have asked, does my family still live at Gorge River? Yes, they do still live at Gorge River. And I'm really lucky because I can come home and stay with mum and dad for basically as long as I like, as long as I don't piss them off too much. And to answer the rest of that question, I'm gonna hand you over to mum and dad. I first came here in 1980, so this is my 38th year living here. And Catherine, she arrived and lived here permanently since about 1990. So mum's been here about, say, 28 years. And this is our permanent home, and I'd like to live here as long as I can. I've got no plans to move away. How often do I come home to Gorge River? Okay, so I return home probably once or twice a year. Um, sometimes it'll be for a week, sometimes it'll be for a month. I like to spend a good solid month at Gorge River each year because it's an amazing place, it's an amazing playground. I can do so many fun things here like fishing and hunting and, and hiking and I do really try and spend at least a little bit of time here each year. So one of the most common questions I've been asked, it's been asked by B7, Anastasia, Banana Anastasia, Hailstorm K9, what does my sister do? Does she still live at Gorge River? Well, I'm not the one to answer that question, so let's ask Robin. So I work for the Department of Conservation as a botanist and a birder, doing vegetation surveys all around the South Island. And I'm also on a small trust working with penguins. So my focus is mainly on the Tawaki, Field and Crested Penguin, and that's the one which lives all around here at Gorge River. So I grew up with them and started working with them when I was 14, and I still do now. They're one of the least known penguins in the world, so there's not many of us who are working with them, and most of the cool stuff we find out is previously unknown, so it's pretty exciting. So I work a seasonal job, which means that I have about four or five months off over winter and I usually travel for two or three of those. And how often do you go back to Gorge River? Usually a couple of times a year for a week or so and maybe one or two other random flying visits. And what's your favourite thing about going home? Being as far out in the middle of nowhere, I still love that. It's just the sea and the forest and the river around, eating mum's homemade bread and eating lots and lots of vegetation from the garden. In one paragraph, summarise growing up at Gorge River. I love it and I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, it's definitely made me who I am and given me the appreciation of the natural world that I have now. So tell me a little bit more about the penguins. So I work with a trust and we are looking at trying to help the penguins all over the west coast. There's a link in the text under this video where you can go to our trust website and you can donate to help our local penguins if you'd like to. So how do we earn money here living in the middle of nowhere? So Dad is an artist, he paints oil on canvas and carves jade carvings uh, from, from jade that we find locally around here. So that's accounted for most of our income. In more recent years we've started to catch a lot of possums here. Our possums in New Zealand are a pest and they're really super fluffy so we actually sell the skins and the fluff. Um, and then also Mum sews the possum skins into bedspreads and cushions and rugs and that sort of thing and when I come home I make them into the warmest, fluffiest possum hats that you'll ever find and I take those to Antarctica and actually sell them down there. So how did I do school living at Gorge River? So I actually did homeschooling for primary school so that's kind of for the, last, for the first five years of school. After that I did correspondence school which is school by mail 
And then for my last year, I actually went out to another town, out to Wanaka, and I spent one year at Mount Aspiring College there. My sister then did the same thing. So how do we get food at Gorge River? So we try and get most of our food locally and we try and live as sustainably as possible. So behind me you can see we grow a very big vegetable garden. When I'm home I love to hunt and fish and Dad's always been a fisherman. And any food that we can't source at Gorge River, we have to get blown either by fixed wing aeroplane or by helicopter. So what sort of fish do we catch at Gorge River? So we catch yellow-eyed mullet and carway in a net in the river mouth. And then if I'm feeling a bit brave, I'll head out into the ocean free diving or fishing. I might swim out to the rocks, I might go up or down the coastline. And I can usually catch blue cod if I get out into deep enough water. Or I can free dive for crayfish and power. Generally, if the weather's good, I can get plenty of food from the environment. And that's one of my favourite things about coming back to Gorge River, is that I can do this. Not many places in the world you can go fishing or free diving and actually catch anything. What do we do for power? So we have about 1.4 kilowatts of solar power, that gives us everything. Uh, we used to have a windmill, but there's a lot of maintenance in a windmill, it stopped working. And we got our first solar panel in 1998, it was like a 25 watt solar panel. And over time we've just added to it until we've got to 1.4 kilowatts now. Are we connected to the outside world? Yes we are, since 2009, which was actually when I left home, Mum and Dad have had a broadband internet connection from that dish up on the roof. It works amazing, it's just as good as internet um, out in a city. And it's really helped Mum and Dad keep in contact with their kids who are now out in the outside world. Before that, we didn't really have anything. We had an emergency locator beacon that we could flick a switch, a helicopter would come and rescue us, uh, but we couldn't actually talk to anyone in the outside world. Has having the internet made a difference to life here? It has made a difference to our lives. We can keep in touch with Kristen and Rob and our children on a pretty regular basis, and every day or every few days you get people from all around the world communicating with us. What do we use for heating, cooking and hot water? I'm going to get Mum to answer that one for us. We have the, a wood fire going all the time and there's any amount of driftwood on the beach. Mostly we don't use an axe, we just pick up the bits that fit and it's as much work as you want to spend getting it from there. All the cooking is done on the stove, there's a wet back inside, we have all our hot water from the stove as well and that's all the heating that we have. What do we grow in our vegetable garden and can we grow food here all year round? Being so close to the sea we never suffer too much from frost so there's always food to eat in the garden. We aren't very fussy so our diet might get fairly restricted in the winter time. We get fancier things like tomatoes and zucchinis in the summertime. Since Kristen left we grow all of our own vegetables except for just a, a bag of potatoes or two for the summer. So what do we do about sandflies? Well, we wear long clothing, number one, and we try not to do too many things outside on days when sandflies are really bad. Humid, days, no wind, that sort of thing. Otherwise, there's very little you can do about them. You can put propellant on your hands, but they still bite. Um, we don't swell up, we don't react to them, which is kind of nice, but they still hurt when they bite. How often do we go out to town? So when I was growing up, we would usually go out to town roughly twice a year. Got to the point where we'd go out three times a year. And then now, mum and dad are here by themselves. Dad goes out kind of two times a year. Mum usually goes out three or four times because she often has to go out to pick up grandma from the aeroplane and bring her back here. When we do go out to town, how far do we go and where? So usually we walk out to Haas, that would take a few days. From Haas we'll drive to Queenstown, um, Dunedin, Christchurch and occasionally we drive to Auckland and every two or three years we go and visit grandparents over in Australia. So although I grew up in the middle of nowhere, I had been to Australia seven times by the age of 17. Do we ever see other people? Yes we do, we have roughly 50 to 100 landings per year on our airstrips, that's aeroplanes and helicopters. Um, and usually people, they'll be flying past, they'll stop in because they know we live here and they come and say hi and have a cup of tea with us. 
A lot of them are friends, sometimes we get some random people. Anyone is always welcome to stop at Gorge River and there's always a kettle on and a hot cup of tea for you. What do we miss living at Gorge River? Well, as kids we definitely missed having other kids to play with, of course. But in general we don't miss too many things. I'm going to get Mum and Dad to answer the rest of this question though. Well, since we're living in a very remote area and occasionally we, or often we don't see people for weeks or even months at a time, we appreciate seeing people. That's probably the thing you miss the most. I enjoy getting a newspaper, catch up with the news, also fresh milk or oranges because we like to have fresh fruit every day. Anastasia Bananastasia asks, what am I doing now? I'm trying to make the most of life and do as many crazy things as possible. So I, at the moment I work in Antarctica. I work down there for about five months a year as a field trainer at Scott Base. The rest of the time I'm either at Gorge River or I am out exploring the world, traveling, as you've seen in my other videos. Do I feel lucky having grown up at Gorge River? Definitely 100% yes. I feel to be one of the luckiest people alive. Um, growing up here has given me an amazing range of skills that most people don't have in this modern world. So now I can honestly say I'm just as happy living in the middle of nowhere, somewhere like Gorge River, Antarctica, as I am living in the world's craziest city like Shanghai, Bangkok. It's taught me to be very adaptable and therefore it's made it's so easy for me to travel anywhere in the world and just fit in. So that's all for this video. I'm going to be making some other videos while I'm here at Gorge River because you guys have been asking for them. Um, I'm going to be talking to mum and I'm going to be talking to dad. So a whole bunch of questions about their life and why they chose to, to live at Gorge River and that sort of thing. If you like the video, uh, please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to help me keep building this channel. Doing really good so far which is great. Um, I'm only at Gorge River for a couple more days and then I'm heading to Antarctica, which is going to be a lot of fun. So until next time, thanks for watching and I hope to see you here at Gorge River sometime in the future.